Namaste Soul Tribe, welcome to this pick a card reading where we're going to ask what fortune you are unlocking at this time. This is specially connected to the Jupiter retrograde in Gemini transit October 9th to February 4th, 2025. Okay, so a long transit where you're going to be asked to choose a pile that is connected to the energy of Jupiter, which is the Wheel of Fortune. This is connected to your womb. And when it's in retrograde, it's asking us to review. So there's a review through this transit between the archetype of Gemini, which is the lover, the choices we make, the mind and the intuition that is supporting a fortune, a good fortune to come into manifestation, into fruition. You can choose what pile, one, two, or three, according to how it feels to you, or you can look up at a zodiac placement. I personally like to associate to my personal uh, planet placement, so I would look at my Jupiter natal zodiac sign, and that's how I would pick my pile. You don't have to listen to this guidance. You can just listen to your own intuition. We're going to look at the zodiac sign for each pile. Okay, oh, there we go. We're just going to keep it that way. All right. So pile number one, we have Sagittarius. We have Virgo. We have Cancer. And we have Pisces. Again, you can choose either intuition, zodiac placement. It could be your sun, moon rising, or your Jupiter. Um, we have Aries for pile number two, we have Scorpio, we have Capricorn, and we have Taurus. And here we have Aquarius for pile number three, Leo, we also have Gemini, and we have Libra. Okay, so that's for all three piles, what good fortune is unlocking for you at this time? I'll see you for those messages. Namaste, pile number one. This is the Wheel of Fortune that you've picked or the zodiac signs. Again, Sagittarius, Virgo, Pisces, or Cancer can be your sun, moon rising, or my favorite, connected to Jupiter, because that's the energy we're connecting to with Jupiter going retrograde. When we go in retrograde, we're actually, especially for Jupiter connected, when you work with Kundalini, your, to your sacral, you're reviewing lessons of creation, maybe past events, past lifetimes, where you felt censored. This is like the womb, kind of like being constricted. So let's see what you're unlocking through the teachings of this retrograde. So we're going to start here. This was two main cards to tap into what good fortune you're receiving. And it's interesting because I felt called to use the Archaea's um, deck, which is female archangels. And it seems that... You know, balancing feminine and masculine is very important for this fortune to unlock. So let's see what's your guidance in particular for this pile. Okay, so this is the one. This is the one. <laughs> okay. Are you meeting someone? Or is it something in particular that you want to manifest? That uh, um, something you're unlocking that is the one idea? that it really matters to your heart. Let's see. Let's see what we have for you, pile number one. We have Archangel Jeremiah, signs, symbols, and synchronicities. And look at this, 1111. There's something about you unlocking some type of activation through the law of synchronicity, through the law of resonance, through the the law of, of, of rhythm I'm hearing. There's some type of synchronization and especially here with those two energies, uh, female, masculine, night, day. There might have been particular something that started 
through the eclipse season of 2024. Stillness. Reflect on this moment with love, kindness, and compassion. Okay. You know what? The good fortune that I already feel that you're receiving is a confirmation of the things that you've put into motion that are going to manifest their sign uh, moving from the ether to the earth, to the physicality. There's a synchronistic dance that I feel is occurring through this major transit of resynchronization, realignment, because you went within. With the reflect, there's certain things that you reflected on and maybe certain things that you still might be called to reflect on. And that's how and what good fortune you're manifesting, we'll get some more details, is that direct communication through your stillness between the heavens and earth. There's an alignment here through your stillness that brings good fortune because that means whatever you sent out into the dreamscape, into the dream state, is going to show its way halfway to you because as you're projecting and visualizing from this moment, you're also seeing the universe um, signaling to you, I'm coming, I'm coming your way, okay? Uh, and some of you, again, I have to mention, this is a collective reading, so it's a lot of people. Some of you, if you've been looking to manifest a specific relationship, and especially at the beginning, I heard the one, it seems that whatever is that intention, the heart of that intention, look at the hand of this archangel on the heart field, okay, um, is coming to you. There, there's this desire for a sacred union, for an awakened relationship, but for some of you also, it is a life that is conscious, a life that is consciously created, that is not just lived by default, but by design. And that's what this Jupiter retrograde in Gemini is bringing forward with this fortune energy, okay? So let's get some guidance. Can we get some guidance for pile number one on how to support this synchronization uh, and manifestation or just get details about that fortune, okay? It comes as a pack, okay? So it's almost like there's something that you're unlocking through the triunity of your connection to source, feminine, masculine, and source energy. The divine child also is through the source energy, is the closest to source energy. So there's a ripple effect that might not just be one desire, but one desire that comes from mastering the law of attraction, the law of creation. There's something here that comes almost as a, as a group energy, okay? Maybe some of you, as I said that, it could be a soul tribe gathering. You're emanating a certain glow. People that are connected to this awakening. I would strongly um, tell you that when you'll see 1111 11 on the clock is a very strong sign for you through um, this transit. Maybe you want to put it down somewhere. Uh, that Jupiter energy is, is, is all connecting to your womb, to your creation. Yes, in retrograde, it reversed the momentum. So that means there's certain things that we want to review. It doesn't mean the fortune is reversed. It means that there's certain things we want to master in terms of aligning to our sacred desires. So let's see what we have here. Wow, look at this. Ace of Earth. Just felt like a sun energy. And I don't know if you can see it. This almost feels like a four leaf clove. You see a little bit? I feel like this is kind of how the universe wants to talk to you through small details. Oh, look at this. 
what is this? The Traskelion? I forgot the name of this sacred geometry. Yes. Look at this. I, again, it's almost like something hidden and yet it's in plain sight. As if you're getting, the good fortune you're getting is also activating your third eye in a, in a way to perceive your way to this good fortune through all the self-reflection and stillness that you've gathered. Especially here, look at this, with the four of swords, four of air, okay? This is a card of rest. And here we have, wow, the ten of pentacles, everything. And this is why I told you, like, there's, like, from the ace to the ten, and here, a repetition of the stillness message. This is something, okay, the good fortune that you're unlocking here, pile number one, comes from sacred alignment. It comes from all the energies that you had to review. Let me bring this down as if I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hearing, this is a quote I had on my wall after my spontaneous kundalini awakening prayers go up blessings come down and that's what i really feel for you there's something about your conscious connection to source that is going to make it rain on you <laughs> yeah i really feel like this this you know even look at how i put it this cascade how i put the cards for you it's almost like from your stillness, from your connection to your sacred heart, there is a reversal of fortune. So some of you, if you've had many years of, uh, you know, chaos or not getting to exactly where you wanted, it brought you in. And this period of time, even though it is this retrograde energy, it's actually showing you through going within this is the way this is the way to your manifestation you have the keys you're the key you're the frequency you're the one that is awakening and even more so you've always been the one you're the one yes you could have been outside looking for that one person but this is actually showing you that when you consider yourself the one, this kind of open up, this gateway, this big gateway. I really feel here um, my throat kind of like started feeling some, it, it was not consistent, but I would strongly suggest if you're connected to this channel to pay attention to the mercury transits, okay? Um, I will post it either here or below. And I'm going to note it here, um, pile number one, that I would suggest looking at the last Mercury that I, as I'm channeling this, which speaks of messages. This is a pick a card uh, for messages of the body. There is something about your embodiment. There's something that is connected to how your body speaks to you that is going to open up this cascade, wow, it was 11-11 on the portion of this. Wow, 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 the alignments and, and synchronicities. I can't with you. Okay. All right, I do feel there is another layer of blessing because we're cascading this. So I'm going to take those and I'm going to put them on the side. And I want to ask, okay. There's a casket of blessings. There's a casket of, it's almost like the fortune is obviously, it's like, it's not just one thing. It's many things. I did not expect this. And see, this is where you have to be open-minded uh, with pick a card readings. Okay, let's see what we have. What else? What good fortune? Okay, what? Wow, I thought it was only one. There's much more. That's what it's showing me. It's like once you open up that gateway through your stillness, through understanding this, there's so much that's coming. Um, first, by making you understand that you're the one thing that makes it all occur for you. Okay? We have. Whoa. 
heal at the root with the ancestry. Look at this. Tree of life activation. There's something with Kundalini. It's something I share with you also. Part of like the little illustration. Let's see with this. We have that star seed deck. Okay. Love it. Okay. Wow. Wisdom of the ancestral tree of life. Okay. So when you're getting this, it could tell you you're, you're connecting all the dots. There's something about you through this period of time when you go within and you see that you are the one, the one that opens up, the one that is the fortune. You know, it's like you're... I'm seeing the rainbow and like looking like for the pot of gold, but understanding that you're the one that's emanating this rainbow, that's emanating all those colors, that is creating consciously with those colors. So through this period of time, there's a strong activation of your kundalini, strong activation of how you connect all the dots of your life. Some of you, maybe there's something, if you are into astrology, your natal chart, your progressive chart, your solar return, if you have a birthday coming up um, through this transit. There's something about how the stars are aligning through you, with you, building a sacred wisdom here. Let's see. Can we have some details about this fortunate tree of life activation? Even though it says heal at the root, I really feel that understanding that first layer of message that you're the one that creates the fortune that you're through your unison of feminine masculine and source you're activating this there's a certain wisdom there might be some healing that wants to come up let's see what that card is Ooh, the seven of earth it's interesting because at the beginning for you i did talk about a rhythm and cycles so there's something about maybe healing the past impatience, but now understanding the proper rhythm of creation that is coming forward as an illumination. There's something here that is being communicated. And you know, again, that triskelion energy is coming again, trilogy three times here. Um, there's, there's an activation of maybe also tapping into time and space here, activating the wisdom. <clears throat> you know what I'm being <laughs> just <sighs> being recalled is that this Jupiter retrograde is going to be dancing very, very intimately with Rigel the brightest star of Orion constellation. Orion constellation has a lot of teaching of how to control our own minds and focus it into a certain outcome, a certain creation. But here, remember, for you to tap into this wisdom, you first had to go within with your stillness and you had to balance really well this, this triology, triunity, energy so you can tap into this so some of you if you want that's going to be for all the piles definitely some communication here with the frequency of orion i'm going to put it here for you orion frequency definitely beautiful guidance all right let's see what we have This is interesting. It's so hot here that I had to have a fan and it just died. So there's something here with the air element, which is the thought. There's something here that you stopped doing, telling yourself. That was the root cause of a cycle of repetition. And that is going to change your fortune. That is the reversal. That is the good fortune that is part of this momentum for you through this transit. Those teachings. It was probably something that you didn't realize you were subconsciously telling yourself. And that is now very clear. It might be also showing you where it all stemmed from. 
This is another layer that I want to share in the zodiac wheel and the angles of the zodiac. Number 30, 43 is connected to prosperity. And I'm hearing right away, money doesn't grow on trees. Okay, so some of you, if you were born maybe in an environment that had broke mentality, victim mentality, thinking that um, you were limited, you could, you, uh, you could only achieve this if you came from this background, that background, especially with the root energy, you're breaking free from this and you're actually uh, very supported with the seven um, and that wisdom is connected to the number seven. This the introspection, the life path of the number seven is wisdom, is the introspection that leads you to wisdom that is going to create after seven is eight. All the abundance and uh, manifestation here. And you see 43 is also seven. Wow, well, I would say for you, the same way you had pile number one, 11, 11, as an activation for you to understand that you're the one thing that creates all of this potential. You're the one that creates your fortune. Some of you, yes, if there is someone specific that will come to you, there is um, that celestial uh, divine gift coming your way. But know that seven, triple sevens are going to be uh, connected to this uh, Kundalini activation, this understanding of how to create with the rhythm of the universe page of earth while well, you're beginning a whole new adventure a whole you see here how the antlers and the wings this is giving you new wings Ooh, i got chills when i said that you're building new wings new wings of trusting the divine on how to create with the divine on how not to rush your blessings because you're the blessing you know it's almost like um, understanding that you're always that celestial gift that has incarnated on earth and everything that you want, you're vibrationally requesting to the universe. And that means it's already there and you're just working your way to it, through it. So there's something about you understanding the laws of the universe that is part of this higher gift. Okay. So that's, that's what I have for you, pile number one. Um, again, as far as the frequencies, I would suggest getting some additional um, Mercury uh, messages. If you're watching this later in time or whatever time, you can just look at whatever Mercury transit picker car we have. Orion frequency is going to help you with some of the wisdom, especially some of you. You might have Gemini placement. Um, because that's where we have Rigel. Uh, as far as the Western astrology, let me be precise with this. And for the ones that want support to align to this fortune, to align and help you support yourself into understanding you're the one, you're in alignment with this, and understand more of the laws of the universe, I will invite you to join the star family down below. This is the star seed rise up where I will lead this cosmic energy alignment session that you will find below accessible to you. Namaste. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your messages. We're channeling what good fortune is coming your way. All right. So what I saw already from pile number one is that there's this cascade effect with this Jupiter retrograde in the sign of Gemini. There is a ripple effect that is coming through this activation. You will see in the description box, uh, below that I will list the frequencies. If you don't find in there, I will list them also below. Um, there was, because I've been having my throat scratch a little bit to get ready for you, you might also be called to review, just like pile number one, the Mercury transit. So right now, as I'm, what, I'm, I'm channeling this, you have uh, body messages that uh, Mercury in the sign of Libra wanted 
to share. There's going to be a lot of different transit through this whole Jupiter retrograde in Gemini because this is all the way to February 4th, 2025. So whenever you're re-watching this or watching this or happen to watch this, you might want to look at what's going on with Mercury. Mercury is connected to the throat, but it's also in the tarot connected to the magician card. So there's something here in particular for you, pile number two, that I feel even more because I'm spending more time for you to say that, um, that is connected to your speech. And this is how you're bringing that good fortune. There's something that you shifted in the way you speak about your experience and if there's still some things that needs to be shifted or be uh, activated, we're going to see this right now for you. Um, let's put those little uh, zodiac signs to the side. Aries, Capricorn, Taurus, and Scorpio. If you want to pick your sun, your moon, your rising, I personally would suggest Jupiter because this is connected to the Wheel of Fortune. But again, who am I <laughs> to guide you this way? Well, <laughs> you'll tell me. Okay, there's something here when I said, who am I? Maybe there's something about the remembrance of your own power, of your own connection to source. Who am I? The direction of your life. Something that is part of that good fortune. I don't know why, but my eyes are being called to look at the text here from this eagle energy, almost as if there is part of your story a part of your story that is being activated especially from the heavens all right let's see what do we have for you my pal number two Ooh, inner alchemy inner alchemy is achieved when you react to fear with love which is so interesting because you know the throat is a place that is the chakra that is connected to the ether element so there's magic there. Alchemy is, is working with all elements. There's this special element that we need, which is the ether. Otherwise, that chemistry would not happen. And look at this. Archaea clarity. Rest, reflect, recharge. Ooh. Okay, so pile number two. Feel that part of what you're unlocking as far as your good fortune is understanding how to be reborn um, from whatever comes your way. It's almost like you're activating a part of you that knows how to transform, to shape shift, to shift your perspective, change angles. Uh, you know, I recently, you know, it's like almost like if someone is seeing the glass half full of half empty, there is here, through this transit, this message that you have been working on shifting the old mechanism that used to um, th see things in a limiting way. And I feel that whether you're fully harnessing this power or not right now, there is more clarity that comes from accepting what is and letting what is guide you through that illumination. Okay, let's get some more cards about this. What is this inner alchemy potential, this good fortune that comes from bringing this? Oh, you know what? You're sparking the light within. Some of you... You know what? It's so interesting because it's almost like I, when I started just looking and feeling more than trying to speak, it's like the information came much faster. And I think this is where I'm relating to the messages of the body through the Mercury and Libra transit because... It's helping you channel your delight. Your delight that has the solution to every problem. Some of you, you had to recharge your energy, the give and take, Gemini, the choices you were making, where you put your focus on. This is how you started being brighter. 
This is what you're reversing. This is also what you're retrieving. It's more light. Mm. Whoa, that's too much. <laughs> oh, well, do, do you mean like that's too much light? Oh, this is so good, pile number two. You might also start to notice that your light is not, is discom it's disrupting uh, to the ones that are not meant to be in your life anymore. It's almost like you're shining too bright and whatever needs to fall will fall. Don't worry about shining too bright, pile number two. Through this transit, there's something, and we'll get more details, that's occurring for you. This fortune of, of this glow up that, uh, you know, this glow up messages has really been starting since um, after Leo season, Virgo, Libra. Okay, there's something you understood and that you're putting into motion. But right away, I can see that there's there, there could be some, you know... People, interferences, events, maybe jobs, uh, you know, things that you were into or part of that are going to fall away through this um, retrograde. Because, you know, in the review energy, there are certain things that were changing. And what I feel is like you're changing, putting so much focus onto others and you're putting it more on yourself. And this is bringing the clarity. This is bringing you more energy. This is what is alchemizing whatever you needed to ch change, shift, you know? All right, let's see. Can we get more details for pile number two about this glow up that they're experiencing, this fortune through their inner alchemy? Very interesting how I want to do those things. No. No, no. There's something here. Okay. There's a shift in order. There's a shift in order that is occurring for you. Maybe um, some of you are getting a promotion. That's part of the fortune. You're being seen and recognized for who you truly are or the knowledge that you're bringing. You're definitely um, surprising some people. Bringing a surprise effect. Even though I would say, hey, it's almost like some people just like knew it, but it's almost like like that that energy that is going to shine through of this. It's almost like there is no more questioning of your potential. I love this. I love this for you. Oh, look at this. The Six of Cups. There's probably some clarity that c comes through uh, healing the child within but also from connecting to the child within, which is having more fun, understanding that enjoying life, enjoyment, uh, focusing on yourself is not selfish, is actually part of what makes you manifest uh, the life that you desire. And when you do, you're vibrating and sending that frequency that benefits everyone. So it's almost like, why the F not? Why would I not do that? You know, so that's what you're activating and it's part of your fortune. It's like, it's your light. You, you're understanding that you joy, whatever you're sparking and whatever could be coming in the way, you're reversing those trends of letting uh, life knock you down. But actually, instead of even going and fight against it, just flow with it and say like, you know what? I might not know where that it's leading me, but I'm going to have fun with it. I'm going to have fun with the unknown. Wow, look at this strength. I did say there's a, something shifted. Probably some of you, something about the Lion's Gate, 8-8 eight, eight portal, okay? Uh, there could have been something that shifted through that portal. Interestingly, this, this type of energy momentum is starting uh, October 9th, and that means just before we're entering 10-10. 10, 10 portal, very much about that transformative energy. This is from one to 10. This is a whole cycle that brings a lot of self mastery. And that means with the mastery of the old, there's endings that open up gateway to new beginnings. This is where I feel at 8, 8, you might have had a lot of epiphanies, a lot of things that came up and you started making and creating that momentum where you brought more of your focus inward versus outward. 
Yes, and look at this, the seven of wands. De definitely a, a confirmation of, you know, protecting your energy. Some of you had to work on boundaries, energy boundaries. Interestingly, um, the seven of wands is related to the last degrees of Leo. It was definitely something before entering Virgo season, you know, uh, the last 10 days before entering Virgo season that you really figured out your worth, I feel. It's just like more of your worth. Some of you, you had to really rest. It could be physical. Um, it's almost like acknowledging also that when you feel what you feel, what your body needs, what your intuition tells you what you need, there's this, 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 this glow up. And through that glow up, there is a natural energy barrier that protects what is meant for you, what is your fortune, what is connected to all that you aspire as a child, as a divine child, okay? And it's almost like you're, you're going to be not having to defend yourself, but just through your vibrational well-being and joy, understand that you're claiming this. I am naturally claiming this. I don't have to feel threatened I am not threatening to anyone. I am actually aligning to source. And from that alignment, everything flows. Wow. Okay, so that's your level one of activation here, pile number two. I saw this in pile number one. This is like first, this first wave of energy that is being activated to lead to even more fortune. So let's see what is the next level. Okay, what is the next fortune that comes with it because fortune is just not one thing i have been feeling thirsty for you <laughs> oh what did i just say <laughs> okay uh, i have to say watch for the energy vampires i would say again because every time i say stuff sometimes i'm like what it did not sound at all like i thought it would oh but it does sound exactly in alignment with what I want to share with you. If you're struggling with energy boundaries, okay, I want you to review the Super Empath playlist. I'm going to put it up there here, okay? Let me put it as a timestamp for you, pile number two, okay? Um, super Empath playlist. You'll see I'm thinking especially activating your psychic boundaries and removing uh, psychic debris from narcissism. There's something about watching how maybe energy vampire, uh, there's still some lessons that need to happen because being thirsty for someone, as I said it, I did not like, <laughs> I did not like it. I did not like it. I found it like amusing. Okay. I found it amusing because we're here among friends, but mm. We definitely want everybody to have their quenching their own thirst. Okay. You're not here to be quenching anyone's thirst. Everybody's got their connection to source. Okay. All right. Now that this is, um, spoken, <laughs> some of you, I feel like you might, again, the throat is coming up spoken. Maybe some of you will have to speak a certain truth to stop, to stop, a, 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 some type of energy vampire, uh, momentum or things that used to occur again and again. Okay, look at this. Archangel Michael, step into empowerment. Um, it always, there's a specific angle in the zodiac um, that is actually connected to the last degrees of Libra. So I would say there could be something that occurs for you towards the end of Libra season, the week before, okay? And those degrees in the wheel, they're connected to Mikael, okay? Uh, not the archangel, but the angel. And this is all about political order, divine order. There's something here. Uh, as you start speaking your truth, that is going to give you access to receiving fortune connected. That's always been meant to be yours, but you know, from the heart, and you can see it's a little bit above the heart, so higher heart chakra, that bridge you know, between uh, the air element and the ether, the thoughts, okay? Understanding that speaking your truth is going to help you manifest the next cycles of your fortune, okay? 
reversing some of those trends from the past. Woof, whoa. <laughs> Do you like the woof? <laughs> and look at this. That's why you need this because you don't want to be around thirsty people, okay? When this is unlocking and unleashing for you because this is big. Abundance, okay? When your heart's intention is to serve humanity, doors of abundance naturally open. And what you're realizing is that, again, when you put this energy towards yourself, you knew it was not selfish. It was just connecting you to this place of creation and that to give birth to you, that connected and, and sparked life onto this reality, onto this realm. So you're really starting to harness this. And I don't know why, but I started to see the glow up in this archangel's feet. Very, very strong glow up. Some of you, I'm going to just mention it and I will put it for you if you want here. Okay. Um, I just did a cosmic energy session. Okay, an alignment for Uranus retrograde in Taurus. Okay, that is, that, that surprised me because we were working through the energetic ley lines of releasing anything in the way of self-worth. Okay, that might be why I'm sharing this. And as the stretches are more into the upper body through this session, I was just shocked by how much got released through my feet. Okay, through my legs. Okay, and that could be something that um, you might want to review. This is only for Soul Star members, but some of you that are watching are part of this Star Seed Rise Up movement. Okay, we are rising up into our sacred gift. So if you want to connect, that will be listed up there. Okay, so Uranus energy session. Okay, for you, my dear. All right, so let's see what else coming forward. Hmm. I would say for you, pile number two, with what I just shared, there might be also a connection to the Pleiades that you might want to look into. If you don't find it here, you'll find it in the details because uh, YouTube limits me with how many <laughs> little things I can post here. Uh, so just in case you don't find it above, you'll find it below. Ooh, this is interesting. There's something as above, so below. Mm. As you send a request, you will be served. Okay, the tower. This is Mars energy, and this is creating an activation that changes your nervous system. The card might look like it's scary, but don't get... Be, don't be fooled by what it really means. What it means is that there are certain things that's connected to the solar plexus. There's certain ways that you used to feel about yourself, okay? Especially with this empowerment. And that through this transit, okay? Through already the lessons that we said you're harnessing because we're claiming this, okay? You're rewiring your nervous system. You're rewiring your nervous system for abundance, to understand that you're always abundant, okay? So through this shift, it's empowering you in greater ways. Let's see in what greater way especially. Holy. I mean, you can't do or get a better card than this with this energy. The sun. Again, you see how much glow up you're getting? Your pile number two, through this phase, you're eliminating a lot of the old uh, cycles of rep repetition. Remember here with the Wheel of Fortune, yes, you have fortune that's coming on your way because it's retrograde. It's a reversal of fortune. So the things that you used to attract that were uh, limiting you, that made you feel constricted, the good fortune that is coming with this is understanding all that we've already started to mention. And you're going to shine so bright through this phase. So bright because you are a divine child of the universe. And you're understanding that you know, some of you, it's also like understanding that you're connected to the stars, you're connected to God, you're connected to source, you're connected to everything. You're already tapped 
tapped in, plugged in, you know, aligned to manifest all the joy that was always, you know, in your heart. It's almost like what was put in your heart, what was put in your soul was always meant for you to manifest. And there's no more shaming, uh, guilting that could be part of the old template that is being totally destructured here. So you are starting a much more empowered uh, part of your life. And that's the fortune. It's like putting all that energy inside of you was step one. And step two is like witnessing how much empowerment, momentum forward, uh, flow alignment through the joy, through the path of joy is just aligning you with all of your desires. I love this for you. Pile number two, if you need support with aligning with those cosmic blessings, you will find also a cosmic energy session connected to Jupiter retrograde in Gemini to support all this beautiful chemistry of energy. And again, that's if you are part of the Starseed Rise Up movement, okay, on this YouTube star family. Namaste. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your messages. We are channeling what good fortune is coming your way, what is occurring with this Jupiter in Gemini retrograde. So even though this Jupiter connected to the wheel of fortune, this is the one you, sp you chose, you spoke of, this is interesting. Okay, we'll keep that in a little side note. Um, this is with retrograde motion, a review. So there's a reversal of something, a reversal of fortune that is leading you to manifest great fortune. I saw from the pile number one, that was the first one I channel, that there was just not just one layer of messages, but two, as if there's something that starts the momentum and then unfolds to a cascade. I thought that was amazing. If you chose through Zodiac placement, we have here Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, and Leo. So I'm putting this to the side and let's look at your good fortune. And I, I kept on hearing speaking, speaking, like we said, at the, like I happened to say, there's something maybe that you want to speak into creation that is finally moving into manifestation through this Jupiter retrograde in Gemini. Some of you, as far as the dates, it's October 9th, February 4th, 2025. It's a long transit and you might want to come back to it. But let's see so far what we have. Oh my God, look at this, the new earth. Share your gifts. So much purple activation here, pile number three. There's something, maybe some of you, and again, it's not going to speak for everyone because this is a general reading, but I have to mention all that I'm seeing. All of a sudden, as I want to channel the messages, I'm seeing all this dark cloud here. And then the clouds, but then this whole clear sky. I feel like maybe some of you, you had to go through certain changes. Changes in your routine, changes in jobs, location, or just inner transformation, inner changes. And now as this Jupiter enter its retrograde, there's something that you've been working on that is actually creating an activation where you're going to be sharing a part of what you've learned through change. There's something I picked up when getting ready for you, pile number three. I was like, this is someone that knows how to maintain their stability even through turbulences even through change. And maybe that's part of the gift. How do you maintain stability through change? And we know right now, collectively, we're going through big, big changes. And whatever, you know, whoever is watching this pile number three, whatever is that wisdom, you know, that you carry within, I'm hearing. Look at this. She's carrying it around her heart. And I would say it's almost like a lower heart. So probably a transition of transcending the ego, transcending all what we think is just um, the scene, the materialized. Oh my God, it's the first time that I'm seeing. Look at the black threads here and the white. 
there's a strong, again, activation here uh, through the polarity, understanding how to transcend duality, how to be stable through chaos. That's, that's definitely part of your great fortune through moments in time where people might feel insecure, might feel uh, disrupt by change. You're actually, look at, oh, oh, I don't see the card yet, but look at this, this deep, your, your connection to source is your stability. This is how, you know, I love that tree pause. Pause. <laughs> the tree pose. <laughs> okay. Some of you may be hugging trees or working with tree energy is part of what helps you recenter. You know, I love when I discover that I my fa one of my favorite places, and I would say, yeah, I think it's my favorite place because every time I meditate and in meditations, um, guided meditation to say like, imagine your your um, your place of safety. I always imagine a forest. <laughs> yeah, I always am in the forest, and I discovered that forest was for rest, and that's where my nervous system feels at peace. So maybe some of you, that's part of your medicine. That's been part of what helps you recenter. I'm also a big advocate of planting trees. I love planting trees. I love the forest. And some of you, I don't know why I have to share this with you, but it seems that uh, your connection to trees, your connection to nature has been part of that activation, the gift, especially with the earth. Being connected to the elementals, I'm, I'm hearing also. Oh, you cannot make this up. Gosh. Transcendence. This is something, this is big for, you know, humanity, the collective, for you to, and even it's like, even if you don't teach it with your words, you are a teacher through your vibration. Listen to this. You are a teacher through your vibration. What you self-master, your vibration teaches. Transcend your mind's limitations and allow your soul's light to truly shine. Wow. You're getting like a spiritual glow up. It's just, it's almost like a, a very, I feel like golden aura. It could be like a deep purple with gold halo around it or everything that you, I'm hearing the Midas touch, everything that you touch turning into gold because of this very specific connection that it's almost like angelic. Okay, all right. What good fortune? What do we want to know more about this great good fortune? Okay, the four of wands. Four of Wands is a card of union. It's part of, in the Zodiac Wheel, it's part of the last degrees of Aries, which are speaking about through your own, you know, through your own balance, through rectifying everything that you feel may be off alignment, you're shining so much more light. So there's a lot of inner work that I feel for you that all the inner work that you've done as far as transcending the duality from chaotic moments of life, traumatic moments of life, you know, and all that can mean, there is this, this, this frequency that you're bringing uh, that is shining this light outwardly. And this is something that I feel, again, look at all this golden energy that's stemming from this person, the rhythm, there's something about body movement, the rhythm of life, how you dance through life. Ooh, yes. How you dance through life. There's something here for you. Ooh, yeah. 12, 21. There's a mirror effect from how you've been transcending life. I took this picture recently. Where is it? I saw it and I was like, I need to take a picture of it. Yes. We can't always choose the music. Life plays for us, but we can choose how we dance to it. That's, that's something like, in, that's the self mastery. That's part of you. what brings you great fortune is have you've learned how to dance through life. Wow. 
which is amazing. Okay, all right. The Nine of Swords, just under this. You see how, and this little, just one out of those, there's almost like, in the pillow. You've done great work, and you're still doing this great work through the shadows to find the one element, the one element that you're pulling out of your subconscious because of the pillow energy, which is the first time I see and notice on this card. I can't believe. Now it's almost like now that I see it, I can't believe I did not see it before. And that's something that is exactly uh, aligned with your energy. It's like most, you, you've done so much digging inside your subconscious mind that once you saw that one thing, whether it came through the dream state or just your introspection or through those moments where you didn't feel right. It's almost like when you acknowledge that shadow and you were able to see that one thing that shifted everything. In, and it's almost like your perspective could never go back to the old. And that's a great fortune here, my dear pile number three. It's almost like, I mean, can't, what? Like pile number three, who are you? Some of you are really going to wonder. I'm seeing this. Some of you have, a, you might have people that, you know, follow you on and off in your life and they might just happen to be called back energetically um, to look at whatever you're doing, whether it's on social media or ask about you and hear through the grapevine or find you on your social media and see like, like, they're going to be really mind blown by how much expended your energy is. And they're going to see it through that spiritual devotion, through that spiritual devotion. I would say like, you know, I'm not a religious person. I'm highly spiritual, but I love religions for what they bring and illustrate, but I don't follow one, but I do, you know, um, I do respect them. I do respect their teachings. I love the teachings, but I like to merge all the teachings from all those, those, those sources of wisdom. And you might be someone that really had to bring your faith into this. And then and it's so much needed at this time because faith brings hope. Your faith brings hope because you had to have hope. You had to have hope. I don't know, pile number three, what you had to transcend, but that doesn't seem to be small. Look at this, six of cups. Some of you, I have to mention it, it might have been from childhood. There is there is childhood dreams that are coming back to life or if they never died, because I feel as some of you, it's almost like you might have put things on the side, but there's something that you've always wanted you know, maybe I'm going to say it because I, I see it. Maybe some of you, it's a dog, okay? A dog spirit or a pet. There's something about maybe um, a childhood desire that is, that is manifesting. And that's part of the good fortune here. Because of you being able to transcend duality, to stay stable in the face of unknown, sometimes chaos, change for sure, because that's the one certainty life brings is change. So let's see the next layer of those gifts. Okay. Those, that's good fortune. Wow. I'm just, oh, this one just stayed on the ground while getting reorganized. So let's see. Oh, wow. Temperance. Not sure, but that is part. Okay. I'm going to mention it. Some of you as I'm starting this channeling, we had a lot of solar eclipse energy. And if you're part of the Starseed Rise Up, I call it now movement, <laughs> some of you, uh, that's part of my membership on YouTube. I would say whenever you feel you need some alignment, we've had some eclipse cosmic energy sessions. You might want to work with one or the other. Okay, those solar eclipse or lunar eclipse meditations could be helping you for that next 
layer of good fortune. I'm going to put it in the timestamps for you. Um, you know what I'll do? I'll put the I'll put the playlist above here, and in the description I will put the two solar and lunar eclipse link. Okay. All right. Let me make sure I write that down because you know what I I love personally you know, reviewing those readings of like, oh, this can give me an awareness of that. And this can open up this gateway because we all have different layers of, of receptivity or how to make those things fit into our lives. And I feel like this is something that wanted to be said for that next layer. Okay. All right. So, all right, let me just put this to the side. I'm going to drink some more water. It's very hot right now. Mm. Some of you that might be also part of um, something I want to remind you, when you do energy work, especially when you work with sound healing, so any of my frequencies, um, and in particular, I recommend it, and you'll see it in the description below, Rigil, which is the brightest star with of Orion, is going to be dancing okay, with Rigel. This whole, you know, especially, let me remember, there's going to be a strong merge between December 24th to November 2nd, okay? There's going to be a merge there with Rigel and Jupiter in retrograde. So that might be something uh, on those dates you might want to put it on your calendar. I know it's already in mine. Uh, listening to the Orion frequency, which you'll find in the description box, might be super, super um, beneficial. Okay, let me just get some more water. It's like in the 90s right now where I am. It's really hot. Um, but yeah, hydration is very important as you're bringing more of that uh, frequency to release the old templates, the old structure of the water within the cells and bringing more of that new water, fresh structured water into those higher frequencies. Some of you, if you want to work with structured water, what I would suggest is having a bottle of water, a glass of water, while you do your meditations. And then at the end, drink that whole water. Or obviously, if it's a big bottle, you just consciously, as you do cosmic energy alignment sessions or meditations, structure the water that you have with you. And bring into this water the changes. And some of you, I feel you've been doing this. You've been working with sacred geometry, structuring things, crystal magic. Yeah, continue. <laughs> continue doing that. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay. We have, ooh, Archangel Zadkiel. Strengthen your boundaries with the number 18, which is interesting because the number 18 is in the angles of the zodiac wheel, uh, the last degrees of Gemini, which will move into uh, later on when this is going to be reversed. So there's, there's something here that you're preparing for, okay? And right now, pile number three, I think it is through the self-mastery, yin-yang, day-night, certain habits, rituals, uh, maybe also I, I told you like working consciously with tools, uh, esoteric tools, sacred geometry, sound, all of this. It's helping you manifest a feel of creation and um, that is very strong, very protected. And that seems that it's going to bring, those degrees are about divine justice between yin and yang. There's a reversal of things that may have been unfair in the past. Some of you, maybe you had experienced a lot of loss. Maybe in astrology, I would relate and look into second house, eighth house, maybe also fourth or tenth house, but especially two or eighth. There's some type of reversal of those those, those potential here planets. Some of you, you might want to look into your chart for that. Okay. There's, there's something that is being brought into justice 
into the hands of the divine. Oh, wow. Look at this. There's a lot of cards, but I'm going to take that one that, wow. You, you have a lot. You see how there was a windfall? Windfall that is coming for you. And that's a card of generosity. You're going to finally manifest as a second layer, much more balanced, energetical uh, environment. Some of you, you're going to reap the rewards. Uh, I feel almost like I'm hearing uh, your spiritual bank account. Maybe some of you, you had it in escrow. There was, there was a lot that was act, being accumulated, working towards uh, your dharma, you know, ending your soul karmic contracts, building up that escrow in the uh, spiritual bank account. Yeah, wow, interesting. Knight of Swords. Yeah, it's, it's going to come forward fast once that momentum is, is put into motion. I don't know why, but I really feel this is going to take more of its flight with the eagle here. And for some reason, I don't know why they put a bow and arrow on this Knight of Swords, okay? Sagittarius season. In Sagittarius season, there's some type of momentum forward with this energy, okay, that is launching something great. Can we have more details, more generosity? Some of you, again, this is something that was uh, in escrow, bank. Some of you, maybe it's connected to real estate, okay? The hanged man. Something that was, again, you see how I would tell you it was in escrow? Remember, there was a lot of cars that wanted to come forward. And the Knight of Cups that is being released. A letter, a message, a news. I don't know for who, but I heard an engagement. It's not for everyone. Oh, yeah, well, okay. Well, uh, it, it doesn't have to be an engagement, but... <laughs> In case I thought I, you know, misheard. Uh, this is something. You see that boy and arrow again? This is, and this is the Gemini card. This is very lucky time for you, pile number three, to reverse some of the old karmic contracts, uh, reversal of fortune that you may have had to experience. There's a lot that you've built up in your spiritual bank account as an escrow that is going to be a highlighted for you and that is going to come forward that's going to get more momentum as we start Sagittarius season and it's building up it's, it's you're going to see the results I feel there's a car that I'm missing yes I am there <laughs> oh wow earth guide your sacred calling upon this planet is to simply love and be loved. Do you remember how we had the earth already? There's something about you from the beginning, pile number three, that is very much um, connected to inspire people, lead by example. You could be already in the spiritual field. You could be uh, whether it's as a coach, as a reader, as a Reiki, a master, any type of like exchange, there's more financial abundance that is coming forward, especially as this energy is started to almost like ground itself, ground itself onto earth. <clears throat> Definitely like all of the ones, all the piles, pay attention to the movement of Mercury. This is the magician card. This is the first chakra that taps into the ether element. So it really helps you to attune your third eye to the higher vision and then your crown to that receptivity. Okay. And it's kind of like the bridge between the spiritual and the, the more physical materialized element on earth. 
And this is something I had not seen before. How energy from the divine wants to come and flow through you. You want to make sure that you work uh, or pay attention in particular uh, to Mercury's momentum. I want to add, because Mercury is going to soon enter Scorpio, October 13. It's going to be meeting three muses. Urania, astrology, Cleo, history, and Talia, comedy, theater. Okay, there's something here that is very strongly activated with those muses merging with this magician card. Okay, I am going to be listing for the ones that have access to the goddess rise up, another movement. Okay, um, those three muses reading in Scorpio, I really feel that. Uh, you'll benefit from this, from the muses in Scorpio. I even made a reel for this because I was saying with all this type of muse in Scorpio, you know something is going to be brewing and it's brewing and now it's going to start unraveling. So I'm not going to say more because I feel this is something that is meant for you to experience, that is part of your guidance, that is part of self-love expression, that is part of all of your wisdom. So that's where your reading ends with your messages. I'm sending you many blessings, much love and light. And remember, for the ones that want to attune to this energy, I do offer cosmic energy sessions. You'll see the one connected to Jupiter retrograde in Gemini just below. Namaste.